Well, I've been hearing about this silly little camera. It's about $25 on that on Amazon and seems like people rather enjoy this. It's a little security camera. So I figured for $25, what the heck? I'm gonna pick one of these things up and see what it's all about. Maybe put a couple of them around the house if I need. So let's give this a go. Well, let's open this, see what we got here. Piece of paper starting guide. Looks like we've got the camera itself here. There we go. Looks like there's the little USB power supply input on the back and a USB. I think you can daisy chain these from what I understand, like three of them together and run them off the same, off of one power, piece of power. You can see there's a little thing here. And then I think that just comes like this. You could set it down, I think. But it also, let's just put that right here for a moment. Open this one. <clears throat> and let's see here, we've got our USB power cape, the adapter here, power adapter, USB cable here. And then from what I understand, this is some like two-sided tape. That is a piece of metal that you stick to the, it's the Wise camera. You'd stick it to that. And you'd stick that wherever you want your camera. And then I think, well, there you go. See, it's like a magnet. So. then you could have your camera. So instead of drilling holes, I guess you could do that. All right. Cool. All right, so I set this camera up downstairs for now. It's just right there, you can see it. It's just stuck to the sign here that's metal, so the magnet on it is sticking to it. I just stuck it there really quick and then I ran the, it's about a six foot USB cord down to there. So basically, I'm getting a shot of my shop. It's kind of seeing that a little wider angle. It sees into that door and a little bit around to here. And I'll show that, I'll, I'll show a couple videos that I happen to save. But I just wanted to show you the location of where I have this camera and a slight issue that I've ran into. So here it is. If we just walk out the door here in this utility room is actually where I keep my router and it's right there. So I'm about eight feet away from the router through the wall right there. And from here it records in 1080p. I don't have any problems. There's no errors that come up. Where I had it when I first initially was messing around with it was if we just walk upstairs here. So the router is almost directly below me here and maybe over a couple feet. And I was sitting on the couch right here at my coffee table. And I was, um, when I initially had it, was setting it up and connecting wirelessly. I actually had it on that speaker right there also so you can see from here the speaker down through the you know through the floor basically kind of how far i am away what i found was that the application that you use kept telling me to um 
when I would try to record in uh, high definition, 1080p, I don't think that the wireless signal in that camera is very good. And because it's using just a basic 2.4 gigahertz um, frequency, maybe that's causing it to struggle a little bit. And so the video would stop occasionally and hawk up in air and say, change to, um, it was telling me like 460p or something. And the setting I was setting at, I went with the middle setting, just standard definition is what it said. There's another setting in there that's like 360p, I think. So, um, so that's kind of the issue that I've had with this uh, camera. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop this video, and I'm going to try to use this app to screen capture um, the app itself, and I'll go through some of the settings for you and what I've learned, and then maybe I can also show you a couple of the videos that it captured. Okay, I'm using a screen recording app here to try to uh, open this app and talk to you a little bit about the app itself. So here's the Wise app. You can download it from the Play Store or even the Apple Store. I'm sure it's on there. I'm using an Android phone. So um, when we uh, come to the screen, sometimes if you open it up, you may it may just start on your live feed. We're going to go all the way back to the beginning, kind of the front of the, the app, the home app part of the app. So here we're seeing a picture of my shop. This actually is not a live screen. Uh, this isn't a live video of the shop. If you click it, it'll take us to the live video, but I'm not going to do that at this time. So first of all, if we look at the top here, there's the plus sign here. If you click that plus sign, that's where you would add a camera or another camera. Um, that's where you start the initial setup. We can see here we've got these shortcuts and we can hide them by clicking the little arrow on the right. These shortcuts um, are just quick little shortcuts to, to turn things off and on that we want. And so where we look at these um, shortcuts is, let's see here, um, we'll, we'll get back to these. I have five short, oh here we go, if you kind of screen over to the right, it says edit, you can see if you click edit, these are the uh, these are my my uh, different shortcuts. If I click the plus sign, the add up there, you can see that we have the name of the task, the trigger, what's going to trigger it, and the action. So what I do is I went down to actions because that's what we want to do, and then I added the other others there. So the actions, if I pull it up, we could see turn on all devices is one. We could turn off all device notifications. Or if we just go to device actions, I've named this camera Cam1. If we click on it, those six actions are the actions we can set up shortcuts to. So you could actually just set up a shortcut to all of them. I actually did five of them. So you've got turn off the camera, turn on the camera, upload a short video, turn on motion detection, turn off motion detection, and restart the camera. So, um, you could see I clicked that to turn off, then you could add a trigger and whatever, but I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm gonna back out, not save that. And let's go back out to the very front. So again, on the shortcuts, you can you could see the edit there and we could create, um, that's where you make your shortcuts. I have turn off motion, turn on notification, turn on motion, upload a video to the cloud and turn on camera. So, that's what I've got going there. Um, we could share this video. I haven't done that, but you could share. Now at the bottom it says devices. So we're looking at cam one. I would assume if I had a couple other cameras, you would see, you know, two or three other camera uh, views in there. We can click on notifications. So here we can see the, um, the day. So like um, this is today, my camera alert this morning. Let's look at one of my alerts. And that was at 7.30. And nothing. That was just catching nothing, I guess. Let's go back to this one. Okay, there I am coming into the shop at 8.10. I was testing it out. The motion. So we can see. 
There you go. That was a 12 second clip. It caught me and recorded. This will record in 12 second clips. Um, it's recording constantly to my SD card. I have a 32 gigabyte SD card that it records to that we can look at. But um, as far as just catching little quick, you know, captures, it does it in 12 seconds, it looks like. You can click on the dates, the different days. I didn't, you know, that's the night I first got it, so I was testing it, and I've got a lot of different little clips I was messing around with. Got messages here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the, the messages part is. And then we can click up in the settings right there, push notifications. So I have push notifications turned on so that when I activate this to um, to uh, you know to to watch and it will send me a push notification if it catches motion so you can turn that on or off if you just want to use it to to view something you don't want to be alerted you can turn that off and then you've got your my account there where you can make changes to your account or whatnot um, we can go into the edit here select all and we could delete these here if we wanted or delete you know one at a time so let's go ahead and go back and we can look at okay so we dealt with the notifications there's the, the devices so now let's go ahead and click on the picture itself and that's going to connect us now we have got the live feed here we are looking at the shop a live feed of the shop and if you look at the top left it says HD we can click on that and change it to 360p or standard definition um, we'll just leave it on HD um, we can click on uh, the little auto the moon and it says auto over there if you click that it'll change it to just night vision is on and click it again and it turns night vision off so it won't use night vision at all or you can turn it on auto and I like it on auto so when if I go down and turn the lights off right now you'll see that uh, you know you'll see it in night vision the sound you could actually if somebody was down there you can turn your sound on and hear what's going on in the shop or whatever you're recording you could actually manually record a clip just start recording if you wanted if someone's in the shop you can speak so we could actually hold and speak and kind of like a walkie-talkie and you could talk to somebody and take your finger off of it and they could talk back and you would hear them of course you would need your sound turned on to hear them you can also take a photo and then there's the motion tagging I'm not exactly sure what that is I haven't messed with the motion tagging um, you can click on you could look at your album again this is back to what we've manually recorded these are manually reco um, recordings or your photos that you've taken so for instance this manual recording here I think let's click on it and if we scroll up we can scrub up to 110 I think this has got my dog coming in it caught my dog there she is coming in you can see her walking in so I was manually recording because I knew she had gone outside that's right I knew she had gone outside let's scroll back and go back to 102 here so I knew she was outside so I put I manually recorded it because I wanted to catch her coming in and see what it looked like at night with the lights off and there she is coming in you could pause it if you wanted you can also zoom in and out so if I go back to 110 let's see here and I'm gonna pause it when she comes around the corner here she comes pause and then you can actually zoom in like a cell phone you know just kind of use your two fingers and, and you know zoom into it you know so I don't know how good the picture will be or whatnot that'll do for someone but anyhow that's kind of interesting I could turn the sound on here if I wanted to you know hear her coming in so you could hear that sound um, and then I could delete the video from there if I wanted so, um, 
there's a photo I took. So let's go ahead and back back out here. And then um, what else here? We can view playback. Okay, so you can see here on the view playback, um, the green part of our timeline is all that we can view. That's what's been being recorded. And again, I have an SD card in here, so it's recording. So I can scroll back. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. There you go. So that's our... So we can keep scrolling back, and you can look at the time... Let's, uh, you can actually, if you want to spread that. So that was me down here in my shop earlier today. So you can see the timeline on the camera itself. Okay. And you can scrub through. This is all being recorded to my SD card. So... I'm just trying to scrub up here. I hadn't started work yet. Okay, so there I am sitting there at my desk. So anyhow, that's kind of uh, interesting. So that's how you kind of scrub and take a look at your video. And you can, you know, go back and stuff. So that's kind of why with the motion detection... When it detects something, it does a 12-second clip. You can look at your timestamp, and then you could actually scrub back through the video to see that. The interface of this app, it takes a little bit getting used to it first, but what you, once you kind of got the hang of it, you know, it's like anything, you'll, you'll be fine. So, yeah, I'm trying to think. What else is there? We got our little settings up here we can click on. Let's look at the settings. We've got our alert settings. We can turn motion detection on and off from here, or we can use our shortcuts that we had. The sensitivity is how sensitive you want it to pick up stuff. It defaults at 50. I turned it up the last couple nights and I had it to like 80 or 75 and it was picking up little dust bunnies or light outside. So I've been slowly turning it down. Um, I may end up just leaving it at 50, but we're gonna leave it at 60 tonight and see what happens. We can record full screen or we could turn it off and just do a detection zone. So if you wanted, you can move this around, make it smaller or bigger, you know, you see that. And anything within the zone that moves through there, it'll record and everything outside of the zone. It'll record everything, it just won't record, it'll, it'll only motion detect what's in that zone. So we're going to go ahead and leave without that um, sound detection I leave that off I have a clock down in that shop there and it's just an analog clock and you know how they used to kind of tick 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 this that camera will actually pick it up and it's all the way across the room the clock is so uh, the mic is fairly sensitive it seems like so although so I, I leave the sound detection off you could Turn your smoke alarm sound detection on or carbon monoxide one. You can set an alert schedule. I have my alert schedule. So when I want to get an alert that there was movement, that's what the alert schedule is. So it records all the time to my SD card, but my alert schedule is turned, I have it set to just alert me at this particular time. And you can go in and adjust the time there how you would like to. Um, or you could just change it to all day if you just want it to anytime there's detection you'll get an alert so we'll leave that off go back into advanced settings and we can see we've got local storage here we can continuously record or we can just record events only you can see how much of our memory we've used from what I understand is when it gets through the whole 30 gigs of recording and then it'll just loop back and start back over and record over the earliest you know recording if that makes sense we can format our SD card there 
We can turn our the camera, uh, our night vision mode. I leave it set to auto. Camera status light. Um, that's on the back of the camera is a blue light to let you know that the camera is on or off. If you, you know, I'm not in the room sleeping or anything, so I. I, it's just left on, but I guess if you had it in a baby room or something and you didn't want the, the light to be on, that little blue light, you could turn it off. Rotate the image. If you hang the camera upside down because you're hanging it under, a, you know, from a ceiling or an ease, the overhang of a house or something, um, you can just turn that on and it'll flip the picture, rotate at 180 degrees. These cameras are not waterproof, by the way, so... Uh, just know that um, timestamp watermark I leave that on why would you not just so that you have something to reference um, show wise logo I don't know why you would want the wise logo showing that's silly but I guess if someone wanted it they could have it and then I have it set to record sound the sync time I'm not exactly sure what the sync time means I need to look at that I don't know if that's I honestly I have no idea what that is so let's go back here now and then we can click on our device info and it tells us about our camera the network um, our Wi-Fi signal all that good stuff you could rename the camera there if you wanted you can restart the device right from there or you could delete the device and and, and start over so that's there um, now, I think that has pretty much explained the app to the best of my ability. That's as much as I know about it in a couple days of using this. And um, I like the camera so far. I'm not sure if I'll pick up any more of them at this time. I want to research some other cameras and some security systems. But for $25, it's actually like $19.99 on their website. I don't know if they charge shipping or give free shipping. I got my camera off of Amazon, I think I mentioned, and it was... $25 plus the prime shipping and uh, you know for 25 bucks I think it's um, it's fine it's not wireless you're you've got to have the camera next to an outlet so you're gonna be about within six feet of the outlet unless you you know extend you know run the you know use an extension cable and a, an extension USB cable but um, I think that, you know, using it for what I'm doing here works great. It would be great for like a baby monitor, I guess. Um, it would be good to hang outside of your front door and you can see who's coming to your door. You can talk to them through it. So, you know, $25, is it worth it? Uh, you know, I think I'm pretty good. Actually, for $25, I think pretty good I think the main downside I have about it is the Wi-Fi signal does kind of suck from you know my experience here so um, your mileage may vary there um, anyhow I hope this wasn't too long and boring I really appreciate you watching my videos if you have anything to add if you have this camera or any any suggestions, please let me know. Any comments, leave them. And um, I just appreciate you watching my videos and liking and subscribing and all that stuff. And I just hope you all have a good day or night or whatever it is that you're uh, doing at this time. So thanks again. Smell you later.